Welcome back to another Coding Cleverly video. Today's topic is about early and late binding, also known as static and dynamic binding, also known as compile time binding and runtime binding. So there are so many names and you could adopt any one of them. So just keep in mind that this is a very important question asked by so many tech interviews and it's an important question asked. So keep that in mind. Okay, so what is early binding, static binding or compile time binding? So now we're gonna ask, what do you mean by binding? Now binding, we know that it means like mapping one thing to another so like when we have a function defined right and we want to invoke it we want to call the function from our main logic we have to create a link and that is basically what binding is whenever we call a function the program control binds the memory address which is where the function is defined right and the function definition are linked at compile time so all of the information needed to call the function is available during compile time everything needed is available during compile time therefore this is generally faster we haven't done a runtime and we don't know what runtime is right now but it is generally faster as compared to runtime binding. So examples of this is like function overloading and operator overloading. So we know uh, how we can adopt function overloading and operator overloading. And we will let's have an example related to function overloading. So if you want more insight, you could check a card on the top right corner where you could watch both of these videos where I already covered both of the topics out. So let's have an example of function overloading and how, do it, how does it explain early binding to us. So I have my program code, which I wrote for my function overloading video. So we have this IO stream using namespace standard and we have this mult function and you can see that there's so many variants of it, mult, mult, mult. So there's four or five variants of this. So you could see that there's also uh, displaying the function number. So you can see function one, function two, and the re return types are so differing. And also the series uh, sequence could also be different. Like for instance, there's three ints over here. There's two doubles here. There's a double and then there's an int, then there's an int. So it's like that. So it's like an int double and then that. So this is a kind of function overloading. And what we do over here is that in the main function, you have mult three and seven. Now what happens is that we're invoking a function here. Now related to static binding or early binding or compile time binding, you, when you get this over here from this point, so what happens is that it invokes the function it calls the function now if now what it does that the compiler finds where this is defined so you see that there's three seven and these are two ints so it goes up here and it would see that there's two ints over here so if function one now this is the definition which is stored in the memory now what it would do is that it would uh, manipulate it and then after that the control program control would go transfer back and give us the answer 21 so this is basically done in compile time and this is why it's known as early binding also known as static binding. So this is a static binding. Okay, so here comes a late binding, dynamic binding, AKA runtime binding, which is done after the compile time. So you see that when you like compile your code, that is the process, what we call pro compile time. When you're like, the source code is being compiled by the compiler to some object code, compile time. And now runtime is when we execute the program. So that is the runtime. So, so this is like the runtime phase and the function call and function definition aren't even linked until runtime. So this is what late binding is. Like we know that in static binding, it was already done in compile time, but it's not done in this case as in runtime binding, it's done in the runtime mechanism. So you could see a polymorphic behavior adopts polymorphism and information can't be determined until the runtime procedure occurs. So this is generally slower than early binding and examples of this dynamic binding could be achieved through virtual functions. And for those of you who haven't watched virtual functions and don't know what virtual functions are, I have a video. So you could watch a virtual functions video as well. I have covered it in my series. So now let's uh, have an example video of how we could demonstrate late binding, dynamic binding and runtime binding. All right, so here's a programming example for dynamic binding also known as runtime binding, also known as late binding. So what this is, is this is my program code, which I explained in my virtual functions and abstract vi classes video. So you could check that video out. And over here, what I'm doing is basically briefing what I ever did. Uh, so basically I have, here is a base class and 
it has a public section and in the public section you you would see that there's two member functions one is show member function which has a return type of void and it just pr prints out that base class show function called and then there's a virtual void print so this is a virtual function now when this virtual function is defined now automatically this is turned into an abstract class so you cannot instantiate an object to this so what we could do is base class print function called and over here in my drive which is which is inheriting publicly from my base you can see that there's a show and there's a print similar to what there's over here so you could see that there's a little bit of a conflict but this could be resolved using virtual functions so what is this happening is this is happening in polymorphism a runtime polymorphism is going to be introduced which is derived class show function called and derived class print function called so what I do is that I can't create an object so what I do is I create a pointer so I say my base pointer to my base and I say base pointer now base pointer declared then after that I have my de uh, my derived derived object so I create an object from the derived class so I say derived class object created and then what I do is that I base pointer pointing to address of derived object so this is a methodology that we have to adopt for runtime polymorphism and this is happening is base pointer is equal to address of derived object. So when we do this, this is basically meaning that whatever base pointer is, which is over here, it's gonna have the address. Now this is the address of operator and you could see that this uh, uh, derived object is declared inside the memory, this the stack. So we could get the address of it by giving this ampersand symbol and we're gonna get some hexadecimal value which is gonna be stored in the base pointer. Now, this is runtime polymorphism where we have a base pointer and we use this po uh, this operator to show the print function and then the same thing to the show function. So what we know that the print function has a, a virtual over here. So. So this is gonna be completely ignored. And the one that is not virtual is gonna be inclu included. So this is gonna be overridden with this one and this is what I'm gonna be called. So you could see that drive class print function will be called like what you expected. And then th this base show function, which isn't virtual. So this one is just gonna be showed. So base class show function called. So this is like what we saw, we could uh, give an example of runtime binding, also known as late binding, also known as dynamic binding. And when I execute this code, and now you would see, that there is. So what we can see here is the drive class print function called and base class show function called. So this was runtime polymorphism and I hope you liked this video. I hope you understood the concept of early binding and late binding or you could say static binding or dynamic binding or also known as compile time binding and also runtime binding. So hope you liked this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and also watch my other videos. For now, I'm signing off and I'll see you guys in the next video.